Hi, I am Dr. Golda Brunet and welcome to the course Theory of Computation. In this video, we are going to discuss about what is Theory of Computation, that is what we essentially learn in this course and why we need to learn this course. The title of the course is Theory of Computation, that is the theory behind computation. So let's try and understand what is computation first. What is computation? From computer science and engineering perspective, the computation means writing a program or executing a program. So we can say computation is a program. So is it then the theory of programs? Yes, to some extent, but we are not going to deal directly with programs, but we are going to deal something more fundamental to programs. Remember, when you start learning a programming language, we don't write the programs directly. Instead, we solve the problem using more general tool called the algorithm. So what does the program actually express? Does it not express an algorithm? So every program expresses an algorithm. So is it then the theory of algorithms? Maybe. So let's try and understand what is algorithm. An algorithm is a finite, effective, well-defined, step-by-step recipe for transforming the inputs to outputs. So the algorithm accepts the input x and transforms it to the output f of x. So we can think of this algorithm as a function which transforms the input x to the output f of x. So we can say the algorithm computes a function and we know that mathematically function is an abstract notion of input output mapping. So what is a function? Any function f is a mapping from the domain d to the range r. For example, is prime is a function which maps the inputs from numbers to the range which is boolean which is yes or no so we can expand the function is prime which accepts the input n a number and outputs yes if n is prime and no if n is not a prime number it is what to note here that the functions just give the mapping between the input and output and does not provide how to decide or how to compute the function. For example, here we just give the mapping if n is prime, it has to give s as output, otherwise no. But we haven't specified how to decide if n is prime or not. And fortunately, we have an algorithm to decide if a given number is prime or not. So we can conclude that every algorithm computes a function. Is the reverse direction true? That is, can every function be implemented as an algorithm? Unfortunately, no. So we can divide the set of functions into two subsets. One subset allows the algorithm to be expressed to compute the function. The other set of functions does not permit any algorithm to compute them. And unfortunately, the latter set is much larger in size compared to the former. That is, the set of functions for which we cannot write algorithm is more bigger compared to the set of functions for which we can really implement the algorithm. This is why we have to learn this course because when we try to solve a problem and the solution to this problem lies in the set which do not have a solution. That is, it is a function for which there is no algorithm existing, then it is quite a waste of time to uh, invest our effort to that. So we should be able to distinguish 
between the problems which we are able to solve and which we, which we might not be able to solve for time being maybe. So the goal of this course is to figure out for what functions can we have algorithms or we wanted to identify the classes of functions which admit algorithms to compute them. So to achieve the goal, we require the knowledge of techniques to demonstrate that a function does or does not admit any algorithm. So are we going to deal with functions in this course then? Not directly, but we are going to deal with even more fundamental concept the set membership problem. So what is set membership problem? Assume yes is a set and the set membership problem is defined like this. Given any A to decide if A belongs to yes. What is the relation between the functions and the set membership problem? Let's see. For any function f from domain to range, there is a very natural set associated with it called the graph of f. The graph of f is defined as the set of all tuples a comma b such that f of a is equal to b. The relation between the function and the set membership is like this. If we are able to show that there is no algorithm to solve the set membership problem of the graph of f, then we can conclude that there is no algorithm to compute f. Why? Because if you wanted to show the set membership of the graph of f, you have to compute f of a. That means that you should have an algorithm to implement the function f. So we can define the set membership like this. Assume there is an algorithm to compute f. So the set membership accepts two inputs a and b and returns true only if b is equal to f of a. Otherwise it returns false. So what does it buy? Why should we go from functions to set membership? Because set membership is more fundamental than functions. So we can just concentrate on set membership. Is that all? We are yet to go a little further. The sets that we deal in this course are not general sets. So to understand what kind of sets we use in our course, let's understand some terminologies. Symbols. Symbols are basic units which are undividable. And examples include 0, 1, A or B, something like this. Alphabets are finite set of symbols. For example, 0 and 1 are alphabets of binary number system. A, B, C, D, etc. up to Y, Z are alphabets of English. The next is string which is the ordered sequence of symbols. Example, a binary string of length 4 is 1010. Zero, one, zero. It can be 1111 one, 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 or it can be like 0111 one, 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 and so on. Suppose sigma is an alphabet. Sigma star denotes the set of all finite strings over sigma. Example, Suppose sigma is the binary symbols 0 and 1, sigma star will include the set of all strings which are finite length in binary. That is, sigma star is an infinite set which includes all binary strings. And if you take any string in the set, the length of the string is finite, but the length is not limited. It can have any arbitrary length, but it has to be finite. 
A formal language L is a subset of sigma star. For example, if sigma is 0 and 1, we can define a formal language L which includes four elements which is 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0. Another interesting language is L1 which is equal to the set of all strings x that belongs to sigma star such that x has even number of 1s and odd number of zeros. And we are more interested in languages of this sort like L1 because this set of strings the x has some property associated with it or it has a characteristics which define the string to be a member of L1 and we are interested in such languages. Finally, the theory of computation is concerned about the set membership problem of formal languages. Is it too restrictive? No. Why? Because if you take the set membership problem in the general way, the input is anyway a string. But the output of set membership problem is Boolean, yes or no, which is not a string. But if you consider the way by which we have implemented the set membership uh, problem using graph of f, we pass both the input a and b. So, the input a is a string and the output is also a string which is also passed as input and the pair of strings a and b together makes another string and the set membership will return yes or no as output. So, it is not restrictive to learn the set membership problem of formal languages to actually understand the theory of computation. In this course, we will consider three different computation models with different capacities of computations and answer what kind of set membership problem can these computation models can solve. And all these notes have been taken from the NPTEL course taught by Professor Biswas from IIT Kanpur and the link for this course is also given. More detailed explanation of whatever we have discussed can be found in this link. And in the next video clip, let's discuss about uh, the syllabus associated with uh, theory of computation according to 2018 regulation of Government College of Engineering, Salem. And thank you for watching.